Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Players Take, episode 128. I'm your host, Justin DeSimone, joined by my co-host, a soon-to-be Deva, Montreal Rice. Hey, what's up? Probably me a soon-to-be Deva. What's that? That's uh, I, Ion, man. So, oh, yeah. Something yeah. happened this past week that I never thought would happen. Montreal, he downloaded Ion and started playing. So, let's just let's just jump right in, okay, real quick. So... You know, we've all been playing Final Fantasy XIV, our group of friends. You know, we're in MMO mode, right? But I've been talking about how I've been playing Ion the last few weeks. I'm pretty addicted to it. Got my Assassin at 38. I have a Spirit Master at 13 with Jet. And Jet started playing. And he's 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 done. But 14 for him is done, probably, until the expansion comes out. Um, and then uh, we lost Andy a few weeks ago. Over a month ago now, actually. And uh, I haven't been playing it. And Snakes kind of has been playing it, but you know he's been pretty much by himself. And then uh, you've been struggling with it because you're you you've been having a grind, you know, grind levels. So you know, Jet jumped over to Ion, and we actually got Andy on it, and Andy's into it. And now you decided to download it this past week, and you played it till like level three. You played for like twenty minutes, <laughs> but it's exciting that you even downloaded it and made a character because. Look, man, if you play with us, there's a lot of group content that we can do together, and it's going to be super fun. So <laughs> Montrell has been indoctrinated into the Ion the Ion way, and I'm very happy about it. But are you actually going to play it? Uh, yeah, I've just been looking at I've been looking at more gameplay footage. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just so hard to find really good gameplay footage of the game because either yeah. it's it's a retail Ion which actually mm-hmm. kind of looks really cool because they like updated a lot of the stuff mm-hmm. um, or it's a uh, chibi <laughs> fucking people and you can't see anything like going yes. on because they're all hardcore PVP. Yeah. But I do like the Templar because uh, they have that weapon switching mechanic. And I think that's like insanely cool. So mm-hmm. I'm going to be playing a Templar because I, I like that aspect of it. Yeah. And you'll be our tank and it'll be great. We'll be dominating dungeons and, instances and and elite camps and it's gonna be super fun man i'm so excited oh my gosh um all right well watch how are you how are you doing this week how's life treating you uh so this week has been up and down uh earlier this week i as y'all know well i mean obviously the podcast people listening don't know but in the group <laughs> chat i was fucking depressed as shit uh so I had an interview for my promotion and um, just because of the job title I'm at and the reputation of that team, or not necessarily that team, but that job title within the county, people don't really believe that I am very technical. I'm a, people don't believe that I can do the work that I do because people mm-hmm. in that role that yeah. I'm at right now aren't very technical, right? I'm the only really technical guy besides my manager. Yeah. Uh, so when I apply for this uh, this uh, position, it's super technical. We're well, not super technical. It's the same level of technical as my last job. Mm-hmm. Um, they kind of don't believe me because of the reputation of that position in that team. And I'm the number four spot. And I told you how, if you guys go back a couple weeks ago, I told you how cursed the number four spot is in the position that I'm at. So um, it's just a lot of things I'm fighting against that. Um, but I did have another job interview and it was really cool. Um, they actually contacted me like right back. <laughs> like yeah. I had the job interview, the phone interview, and then I had uh, the panel discussion, the panel interview where they, you know, Skype you and have four people watch you and ask you questions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I was not supposed to hear back from them for two weeks. They called me back the next day because the director wants to meet me. Hmm. So um, I'm going to meet him next week or something like that. Uh, but so it's been up and down. It's been up and down, and uh, right now I'm just having fun. How you were a couple months ago with the NFL draft. That's how I am with the NBA draft. And it's hilarious, and I love <laughs> NBA Twitter right now. So yeah. I'm having my fun with that. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Well, dude, I didn't know about the yeah, I didn't know about the interview you had with your uh, your place. That's uh, unfortunate. I mean, it's their loss, you know. Uh, yeah. Not not only are they not going to gain you in the sport team, they're going to more than likely lose you in the team you're on now. So their loss, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, is what it is. Uh. Yeah. My job has been uh 
I've been on a roller coaster, man. Uh, people are quitting left and right. Uh, one guy though, uh, one of our friends actually quit and then, um, got offered a pretty good amount to stay. So he's staying. Um, okay. And so it's just been a roller coaster of emotions. I'm tired. I've been doing a fuck ton of work for this company too. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we are actually, uh, we were guests on, uh, you know, Dennison. He's been on the show several times at this point. Uh, definitely our most um featured guest uh in his uh podcast the catch up cast he does with his uh co-host john um we were on their show yesterday and uh, that was a lot of fun but uh also tiring to do two nights of recording in a row uh for us so uh so you know it may be a little bit low energy today but we'll we'll do our best everybody we'll do our best so uh let's get into a much trial for those of you who haven't listened before this is our weekly show where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post at 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast app of choice. And if you could please send us questions to theplayerstake01 at gmail.com or hit us up at theplayerstake on Twitter. Ask us questions, and we would love to read them on the show. We've been doing it uh, you know, every so often here with uh, Dat Dude asking us questions and a few others here sprinkled in here and there. But uh, please send us your questions. We would uh, love to interact with you guys and kind of, you know, you know, if you have a question about us, you know, our game likes, dislikes, or even a specific game that you want to ask us about, please send us, uh, send that in and uh, we will certainly answer it here on the show. So, Montreal, uh, let's get into it. Let's start with what we've been playing, which uh, for me, not much. Uh, Apex Legends, Ion. That's my that's my game. Those are my games. Final Fantasy fourteen. I haven't played in over a week. I think my my pretty sure my subscription has lapsed at this point, and I am not going to re up it for the time being. Ion has my attention, and uh, probably will for the foreseeable future. So I'm I'm deep in MMO land, and uh, hoping that all of you guys are able to play it with me and Jet uh, because it's going to be super fun. Super, super fun. But uh, what about you? What have you been playing, man? Uh, same things, pretty much, man. Uh, Ion, Final Fantasy fourteen, a little bit. Uh, Apex, and that's pretty much it. I was trying to play single-player games this week, but I'm still not Just not feeling it, player. right? Yeah. I yeah, what is play, wrong with uh, us? What's wrong with us, dude? Like, what, what is going on? Nier. Yeah. I tried, not Nier, but Neo. I tried to play Neo the other day. Actually, I tried to play both of them, actually. And near, I instantly put down because I just got, I don't know, I just got bored. And it's not a boring game. I just got bored. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like playing it. Neo, I played, uh, I finished one region and then got to the next region. I'm like, okay, I don't feel like fucking playing this anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I just I just haven't really, I, I want a single player game that I can just jump in and play. Um, but unfortunately, all the single player games I have are like very in-depth. Uh, except for like mm-hmm. Devil May Cry, and that's stuck on my Xbox One, and I don't yeah. feel like I really want to play an Xbox Series X. I really want to play it on Xbox Series X because I get mm-hmm. the 120 frames and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just stuck right now on on multiplayer yeah. games. Yeah. Um, I was trying. I hope I got the mo- that Halo Infinite beta, mm-hmm. um, but they didn't send it to me, so I didn't get selected for that, unfortunately. Bad. Well, yeah, I was nothing going to stream that. <laughs> I'm uh I'm in the same boat as you and I'm 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 actually been thinking about lately like how am I going to get myself out of this rut where I like don't want to play single because because I can't do this forever right like you know I mean I guess I can technically I can do whatever I want obviously it's my my game time but you know we do host a podcast you know we probably should play some games that are coming out at some point um <laughs> and talk about them but uh I don't know, man. I'm like, so, you know, I was thinking about Sekiro and uh, Ghost of Tsushima this today on the way home. And uh, I was going through some of my old like tweets where I was posting videos of like gameplay from both of those games last year. And I was like, man, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, that might be pretty fun right now. You know, when the PS5 version comes out. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Wait for the PS5 version. Yeah. yeah, Well, it's coming out next month, I think. Right. A few weeks. Yeah. It was August, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I don't have that long to wait. So, I I mean, I'm I'm doubting I'm gonna jump into that, but 
at the same time, like, damn, that game was good. And I bet it's going to play like a fucking just beautiful on the PlayStation 5 natively. So so this yeah. is where I wish our friends had PS5s because that game has multiplayer and oh, it has yeah. really good multiplayer. That's right. And I wish our friends had a PS5 because they can jump on that game and play. I, I, think, I think Jet and Snakes would hella enjoy that game because it can get really in-depth as well. You can. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can min max as far as you can on MMOs, but it gets really in depth. Uh, you can do raids and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but other than those, I was thinking like it might be a good idea for me to find an indie game, some kind of or not necessarily an indie game, but you know, like that style of game, something that's like short, you know, ten hours or less that I can mm-hmm. just kind of like knock out real quick and just kind of get my head back into that space because. Yeah, right now I'm like, what do I do? Do I go back to Mass Effect? I'm like, ah, ah I was kind of not. I wasn't feeling that game like, like Mass Effect 2 when I was when I kind of put it down. You know, I kind of was like really excited to get away from it, actually, when I when I started playing Final Fantasy. So um, I don't I do want to get back to it, but it's just like I don't I'm not I don't it doesn't excite me like thinking about it isn't exciting me at the moment. So I don't know. I mean, I'm probably going to continue to let this eye on obsession drag me for the next couple weeks Uh, i really want to hit 50 and like start working on gear in that game but there is a point of diminishing returns where like my time investment in the game is just not that valuable at a certain point um but i need to hit 50 before that really happens so i think at that point that's when i'll kind of start like dabbling away from it a little bit but uh the summer of mmos continues and unabated and uh apex uh we got a new season starting uh next what tuesday right i think uh, the third. yeah the third yep yep so uh i'm actually looking forward to that uh i definitely the new character looks kind of lame but not from an aesthetic standpoint but from an ability standpoint yeah, his loadout yeah. is kind of boring and it feels a little uninspired in my opinion um they're they're kind of starting to rehash ideas already and we're we're only like 16 characters in or something like that uh so that is a little disappointing i would say but uh and the changes they're making to guns are ugh, everything that was in the patch notes every gun change i would like to say without fail every single change to guns i went ugh, ugh, oh why no you know it's just like it was it just got worse and worse and worse and worse the further down the list i got so um i am a little miffed about that but we'll see you know, we'll see how it plays. I, we're not getting a new map either, which sucks. Yeah, they're tra- they're changing maps. They're changing yeah. some of the things around the maps. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the gun changes. I'm not gonna yeah. lie; as much as they suck, uh, it will switch some things around. Change the meta, so, maybe. Yeah, yeah, because um, the meta was kind of I don't want to say boring, but I, it was kind of OP. Everyone was running Evas. I think that was the biggest. Yeah, 301 yeah. Eva was like the loadout. Yeah, yeah, and not I'm, me, I'm though. glad they're Fuck nerfing that. the Eva. Yeah. It's kind of funny how that happens, though, because it's not like they did anything to the Eva. Like, the Eva hasn't been touched, like, it feels like in forever, you know? And yeah. all of a sudden, people just, like, realize that, oh, it's actually still just, it's a pretty good gun, you know? I mean, honestly, I don't think any, I, I know people were, like, complaining about the, the rate of fire. I think the range of the, thing, the gun is insane. Yes. yes. Well, it's they the range combined range. with this rate of fire, because you can be, you can probably be 10... 10 feet or 15 feet away and still do pretty close to full damage with that thing. Yeah. Um, and further than that, you can still hit people pretty reliably with it, uh, especially with a choke. It's not, you're not doing full damage, but you could do 20, 30 damage. And if, if somebody tries to run away from you, that's point being is that if you take their health down far enough, you can still keep firing them with the Eva. You don't have to pull another gun out and you could probably yep. knock them, you know? Yep. Exactly. Um, so unlike the, uh, w- compared to the other, uh shotguns particularly the peacekeeper which is terrible at range the uh mastiff is okay at range it really needs a choke to uh kind of hit reliably but um yeah so i mean i understand the nerf i do but they're also nerfed um they're getting rid of the anvil receiver for the 301 uh which in the the uh, flat line which sucks um you know I, I don't know why they're vaulting that again uh they're also putting the prowler back in the loot pool but it's burst only and i'm f- I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? You know, way to just put a useless weapon on the ground. Like, no one's picking that thing up, bro. I'm telling you, like, the thing in the, that thing in burst mode is useless. It's a completely useless weapon. And then what? What are they putting in the care packages? The Spitfire and the alternator, right? Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, and, and, I, that, and I used to run that loadout, and that's crazy because I yeah. everyone used to, in my opinion, uh, and I saw another streamer mention this too, because um, he actually was like, yeah, I actually agree with them putting the alternator in the um, care package. Because the alternator, in my opinion, was one of the most overpowered uh, um, submachine guns because it was deadly accurate in it and it wasn't... Um, well, it was really fire good high. hip fire. It's really yeah. good hip fire. It's... It's, it's probably one of the best weapons hip fire in the game, actually, because it is yeah. like you said, the hip fire accuracy is insane. Like if you have your reticle on somebody, you're going to like it, it's 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 such a small like reticle that you can hit somebody reliably with it 100 percent of the time. Almost if yep. your aim is decent, you know, whereas with like the R99, that's a better submachine gun, quote unquote. But the things like a wild bucking Bronco, if you miss the initial <laughs> shot, you're going to miss the entire magazine, you know? Exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, whereas with the alternator, if you miss a couple shots, it's really easy to adjust that weapon. That's another reason the Spitfire also started to find prominence, I think, is that that is another weapon that it has such a huge magazine and it's it's not an unwieldy weapon. It's a really, like, the recoil on it is pretty reasonable. Uh, even ADS at range, it has pretty decent recoil. Like, the recoil's not crazy. Uh, it's manageable to the point that the gun is it's easy to adjust when somebody's moving, you know, with it. And I think those two guns, I, I, I understand why they put them in the care package, but I'm starting to really dislike uh, response tendency with with weapon balance to uh, when when a gun is overpowered and they don't know what to do about it. They just throw it in the care package like that's their that's their solution to the problem, because. They threw the Prowler in there because uh, this actually goes way back to like season five because the Peacekeeper was OP as fuck um, in season four. Mm -hmm. It was insane. Everyone ran it. The thing could two shot you was the gun was fucking absurd. And um, what they did was they just put it in the care package and OK, problem solved. <laughs> and then they did that again with the Prowler in uh, season six, I think, because the Prowler all of a sudden in season four and five started becoming a lot of people's favorite gun. And, and it was Dude, it's a really powerful weapon with the select fire when you could fire at full auto. What did they do? They put it in the care package. Bye-bye select fire. You know, they took that hop up out of the game when they did that. And then uh, what did they do in uh, season eight? I think it was season eight or nine. They uh, they put the triple take in because the triple take was like, you know, it had been getting buffs over time to the point that it was literally, in my opinion, like one of the best guns in the game straight up. It was so good. It was good at mid range. It was good at long range. It was good at short range. Like it was just... The gun was fucking insane. Like, I loved the triple take. Like, it was my favorite gun I've probably played with in a game in a long, a long time. And what did they do with that? It was, like, to the point that people started calling it OP, they put it in the care package. And, and they turned it into a marksman rifle rather than a sniper rifle. And, they, it, it, dude, that one was such a huge blow to me that I legitimately, like, didn't want to play the game for a while. I was, like, because I was so into the triple take. It was such a consistently good weapon for me. And I was so good with it. Like I legitimately was destroying people with that gun um, at range and even at closer up. Like once they took it out of the game, I just, I just was like, what do I even use? Like, I don't even know what to use anymore. Like I, like that gun was my, like I had my identity as a player was like tied to that weapon. So it sucked. So they put that in the care package, which they're not taking it out. And then, uh, then they do this. They put the Spitfire and alternator in. Now the alternator for me, wasn't a big gun I used. But the Spitfire was, and I understand they're doing that also not only because it's OP, but because they have a new LMG they're adding in that's a heavy LMG that they yeah. want people to use that instead. So I get that, but I think they're kind of running into problems now where uh, gun balance is like they, they, they just they seem to not have a handle on it. Like they don't know how to deal with weapons when they get to a point where they're they're actually overpowered and they need to to kind of tune them in some way because this is the result. Like they to, they try to tune it a little bit. They do it every time. They tune it a little bit. It doesn't work. It's still OP, and they just put it in the care package and make people forget about it. And then by the time it comes back, like it's out of the care package again, the gun sucks because there's other guns that have been buffed over time or new weapons they added or things like that. So. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know how you feel about that, but it's it's kind of an annoying trend. Well, I haven't played heavily since like season five. So I'm, I just came back at like yeah. it was a season nine. So um, I don't really have an opinion on like the buffs over time and debuffs or nerfs. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, it does suck to see like my favorite gun was the alternator. I love that gun. Yeah. And it does see that 
it does suck to see that gun go. But I actually don't mind the Prowler and Burst Murder. Every time I had it out of the care package, it was really good. But it yeah. was a care package weapon, though. So it will be interesting to see how it functions as a normal burst weapon. Um, Man, you used actually, it in burst as a care package weapon? Because it has an auto auto fire. Mode. No, I, I did use it as oh, okay. an auto fire, <laughs> but I used it um, at range as a burst weapon. Like mid range, oh, it was burst. And when I got close, I switched it over to auto fire. God, the burst on that gun feels so bad, especially hip fired. Oh, it's, it's so bad, man. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, right now, my loadout is like Bocek 301. That's like my default most games. Um, I, like the dude, I, I the bow has become my replacement for the triple take because, bro, I just that thing like I'm fucking wrecking people with the bow, man. It's just silly. Like, <laughs> like people are like running and like fighting at range. And man, I'm just picking them off, you know, like I love the bow. So. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, Apex is always fun. But all right, Montreal, you playing anything else you want to mention? Uh, nope, that's it. Okay, let's move into the news. So last week we talked about Activision Blizzard. They had been sued by the state of California uh, after an investigation, a two-year investigation into um, their culture, their company culture, and they are suing them because they have a hostile work environment towards women, people of color, um, and there's a lot. They they accuse them of. Uh, fostering environment that uh, has sexual harassment, uh, just discrimination in general, uh, not offering people promotions because they're a woman or uh, things like that, uh, making it difficult and also paying less money for similar work, things along those lines. So we talked about that last week. However, uh, Montreal and I, you know, after last week's episode, Montreal and I felt like we didn't cover it well enough because there were some things that we we missed in our initial discussion about it. However, uh, the world made it so that we were going to have to talk about this anyways again because a ton of things have happened in relation to this in the last week. And let me go over a few of them. So um, there were statements from J. Allen Brack uh, who is the current president of Blizzard. There was also a statement from ex-Blizzard president, Mike Morhaime, as well as an employee staged walkout at Blizzard that happened, as well as a petition that was internally uh, sent around the company that was signed by more than 2,600 people working for Activision Blizzard. This was as of yesterday, Wednesday, uh, 728. And then Kotaku published an article, uh, yesterday showing, uh, photo evidence of something mentioned within the lawsuit, which was the Cosby suite, uh, that Alex F. Frasiabi, um, was supposedly internally kind of infamous for, um, is that he would, you know, be at events and he would, his hotel room would be the Cosby suite and he would try to invite women into it and blah, blah, blah. Um, things along those lines. So all that happened in the last week. And I want to read uh, the things I want to particularly cover though. I want to talk about first is uh Morham's statement because what we didn't talk about last week and, uh, became really obvious after the fact, um, was that this uh, these harassment allegations extend further back than um, just J. Allen Brack's tenure with Blizzard. And it goes much further back. And according to Jason Schreier and even other people that have wor- haven't worked at Blizzard for years that used to work there, uh, this culture has existed for like a decade plus, probably even more. It might even go as far back as the 90s, potentially, uh, for all we know. But so I want to read more statement. This is fairly lengthy. Bear with me here, but uh, I think this is important to read. So, quote, I have read the full complaint against Activision Blizzard and many of the other stories. It is all very disturbing and difficult to read. I am ashamed. It feels like everything I thought I stood for has been washed away. What's worse, but even more important, real people have been harmed and some women had terrible experiences. I was at Blizzard for 28 years. During that time... I tried very hard to create an environment that was safe and welcoming for people of all genders and backgrounds. I knew that it was not perfect, but clearly we were far from that goal. 
The fact that so many women were mistreated and were not supported means we let them down. In addition, we did not succeed in making it feel safe for people to tell their truth. It is no con- consolation that other companies have faced similar challenges. I wanted us to be different, better. Harassment and discrimination exist. They are prevalent in our industry. It is the responsibility of leadership to keep all employees feeling safe, supported, and treated equitably, regardless of gender and background. It is the responsibility of leadership to stamp out toxicity and harassment in any form across all levels of the company. To the Blizzard women who experienced any of these things, I am extremely sorry that I failed you. I realize that these are just words, but I wanted to acknowledge the women who had awful experiences. I hear you. I believe you. And I am so, so sorry to have let you down. I want to hear your stories. If you are willing to share them as a leader in our industry, I can and will use my influence to help drive positive change and to combat misogyny, discrimination, and harassment wherever I can. I believe we can do better. And I believe the gaming industry can be a place where women and minorities are welcomed, included, supported, recognized, rewarded, and ultimately unimpeded from the opportunity to make the types of contributions that all of us join this industry to make. I want the mark I leave on this industry to be something that we can all be proud of. End quote. Montreal, what do you make of that statement by former Blizzard president Mike Morham? Uh, it's all semantics, or it's all like, you know, mm-hmm. just talk. They don't mm-hmm. really care. I mean, it's a lot of stuff to unpack. I don't know how you got this set up. I don't I don't want to, you know, set up, miss a step on your interview or your well, hosting. At this point, we're kind of open. I, I, there's a couple things I want to talk about in particular, but I, I th- we're, it's free reign, Montreal. Whatever you want to discuss, whatever direction you want to go with this. I wanted well, to start with Morham. He- yeah, because we well, didn't cover was, it last week, but um, he yeah. was in uh, in this in 2010, right? I believe he was still the president. Oh, absolutely, he was president up until like 2018, I think. Yeah. So, th- so like he, he he left recently. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So my thing is like that picture of Bill Cosby. That is the most egregious shit I've ever seen in my life. Well, yeah, not man. in my life. I just over exaggerated. But that is yeah. the most egregious shit I've seen. In a while in the gaming industry. Like that mm-hmm. is crazy to me. Yeah. And I can't believe uh I, I just can't believe his statements. Like and then that girl, like we talked last last week, that girl committed suicide. Well, we didn't watch. talk about that. That was one of the pieces I want to discuss, but we'll okay. get to that in a second. Yeah. So um I just don't believe it, man. I, I don't believe it. Um I, I it's just, at this point, I don't know what to do with Activision Blizzard. I don't even know what to say about them because I feel yeah. like, I feel like, uh, even after this conversation, even after all this exposure, next mm-hmm. week everything's going to go back to normal. I, I just mm-hmm. I don't believe people, especially the Call of Duty crowd. I just really don't believe they're they they give two fucks mm-hmm. about what's going mm-hmm. on right now. Yeah. Uh. So. Well, I, I don't know. So for me, because. I am the resident Blizzard fan uh, on this podcast, for sure. Um, And I've been very critical of Blizzard over the years, especially since we started the show. Um, And I think I I briefly touched on this last week. However, this all this coming out puts a lot of things I thought about Blizzard in perspective. Things make a lot more sense now to me because this is a company that hasn't been at its best at its peak in a very, very, very long time. I would argue going all the way back to the launch of world of Warcraft, they haven't been at their peak and this stuff may have been a strong contributor to why that happened and why it's happening now, potentially, because how can you work? at full capacity, especially as a woman or a person of color working at a place like this, and you have to worry about this. It stresses you out. The drama or just even the thought that somebody's going to do something to you or harass you in some way, or you're going to have to deal with some joke you don't want to, you know, you don't even want to hear, you know, (laughs) 
or or worse, they try to hit on you or they touch you in some way when you you're not you're trying to work, you're trying to do your job. You know, the last thing I want at my job is somebody to like make advances on me while I'm working. Like, you know, like yeah. that's the last thing I want there, you know? And especially, you know, anybody who's married or taken in any way, you know, of course. So it's like I I I feel like it, this I'm I wasn't surprised by this when it happened. But the more I think about it, the more it's like, man, yeah, this company's been in disarray for a long time. And this makes sense. Like, because the leadership had no control over what was going on underneath them, clearly may have even been in on it to some degree. Who knows? We don't know that. That hasn't been like busted or anything yet. But um, it how, like, how do you even... Like, how does this, I'm surprised this company even functions with, with some of the things that, that are coming out about it, you know, like how do how do, why do people even like stay there at, for any extended period of time? You know, like who well, wants to work I, in an environment like this? It's Activision it's, Blizzard. It's, I mean, it's, it's Blizzard. Right. I know. I know. And that's the problem, right? That name is like prestigious. So many of us love Blizzard. Like we think about Blizzard with happiness when we think about the old times, right? But the old times are gone. They've been gone for a long time, dude. And Morhaim's statement here in particular is I like you said, it's all it's just like it's just I mean, he even says it here. It's words. Like it's easy for you to say, Mike, when you're removed from the situation now, you don't work for the company anymore, and there's really not gonna be any repercussions on you. It's really easy for that. Because I'm sure. I'm sure you knew about a lot of this, dude. Like, there's no way you fucking didn't because you made this company. Like, you made this company. And many of the people that worked, that were mentioned in some of these, in this lawsuit, are longtime Blizzard veterans, you know? And they're probably people that he had close relationships with. So he knows who they were. He knows, he knew who they were at the time and who they are now, you know? Like, I, I, I just I I can't fathom an idea that he's playing dumb, you know. And to be honest, I actually like weirdly feel almost bad for Jay Allen Brack because his statement wasn't much better and honestly he handled some things poorly, uh especially related to Afrasiabi, but at the same time he inherited this culture, you know. This culture was already ingrained by the time Brack came on, you know. And He's having to deal with the fallout now, <laughs> you know? So part of me almost feels bad for the dude. But at the same time, he's been at the company a long time too. And who knows what he had influence over that he could have stopped or uh, tried to curb or change in some way, you know? It's like, so at this point, like you you asked, like, what do we do with Blizzard? What do we do with Activision Blizzard? And uh, my answer right now is that it's a personal choice for everybody, you know? There are many options, boycotting their games, being vocal, uh, not supporting them in any way, um, also playing their games still, but being vocal while you're playing them. That's also another option. These are all different ways to protest what is happening. Um, I personally believe a boycott is not the most effective way to get our, get the message across because you are impacting the people that do work there that had nothing to do with this, that are just trying to make the best games they can, uh, they are going to be injured by... They're the ones who are going to pay the price ultimately if Blizzard doesn't, you know, make the money that Activision's looking for, you know? They're the, they're the people that are going to get let go, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. And, and the fact that it was so deeply ingrained in leadership in uh leadership positions within the company is just so disturbing like dude this is this is awful it's like one of the worst things i've ever seen it's probably the worst like i i know i i'm i'm not remembering everything right now but and there's probably some recency bias here but this is one of the worst things i can remember remember in video games ever happening and uh blizzard's done like they're dead like to me like i think i think anybody that was still hanging on at this point to blizzard they're, they're done. Like this, this has got to kill it for them. You know, any fandom they had left, like what, how, how could you even, how can you openly support this company in any way beyond 
tr- wanting to play their game, you know, that looks maybe kind of looks cool. You know, it's like and and for me, dude, it's like this comes at a funny time because we as a group kind of made a ch- made a choice to give Blizzard the finger like a couple months ago when we didn't jump into Burning Crusade Classic. You know, well, we did that. I'll say we did that uh, a year ago, a year or two ago. Yeah, it was classic. two years ago with classic. We all just stopped playing classic. But we played it, though. We at least played it. But Burning Crusade, when the Hong, when the Hong Kong even... thing happened, we just stopped playing. True. Like a lot of people. Ju- I mean, that wasn't me and your reason for jumping off, but a lot of people just jumped off after that. I remember yeah. that vividly. And I never actually went back. I never even touched another Blizzard game mm-hmm. uh, after that. And it wasn't, I, I, this is funny because I, I mean, I've kind of been boycotting Activision Blizzard for years now, if you think about it. I haven't mm-hmm. touched the Call of Duty game since Modern Warfare, uh, the, the like the current Modern Warfare. I played that and then I played Warzone for a little bit and then that was it. But I mm-hmm. played Modern Warfare because for the single player. Um, and then I guess if you want to say Activision Sekiro, I was playing that too. Yeah. But besides that, for Blizzard though, Blizzard specifically, I haven't touched a Blizzard game and been excited for a Blizzard game probably since Overwatch. In Overwatch, I wasn't even excited for it. So that was 2016. So, yeah, like, I've, I've personally been boycotting them for my own reasons because I just don't like the company. I don't like the products they make anymore. They're just not good products anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they don't have the like customers' you, interests at heart. It shows in their products. Yeah, and they and not only the customer's interest at heart they don't have heart themselves like right the products themselves do not have any kind of nothing in them like even diablo 4 as good as that game looks i feel like it's just like a shut up it's like okay here you guys go god damn it here well it's gonna fuck. be soulless dude i think that's like it's not gonna have personality i think that's what's gonna happen with that game it's probably gonna be good mechanically it's gonna play well it's gonna feel good to play but I think, like you said, the game's not going to have heart. Like, none of their games have heart. And I, I think the game's not going to have heart. And, dude, it's like I said, like, how 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 do you put heart into a game as a developer when you have this hanging over your head all the time? You you work in a company where this is the environment, you know? Imagine, Montreal, imagine, imagine when you worked with me, like, this is kind of what you had to deal with. I mean, actually, you did somewhat in some, some ways. Um, and, dude, it made it hard to work, right? Like, how do yeah, you even focus on your job, you know? Because you're you're afraid somebody is going to fucking like get you, you know, in some way because they have it out for you for some reason, you know, and it's like it's kind of it's similar to this, even though it's not like it's not harassment necessarily like sexual harassment, but it's harassment in some form, though. Um, and it's just like, I don't. I don't know, man, it's just like, like, I want to say this sucks, but. To be honest, like it obviously it does suck for the women and all the people that were victims here. But for Blizzard is kind of what I mean. Like this sucks that this that this is coming out about Blizzard. But now it's like I don't. I'm just like an acceptance. I don't even care about them anymore. Like I'm with you, dude. Because um, you know Diablo two, the Diablo two remakes coming out later this year in a couple months actually. And one of our friends is is really looking forward to it. You know he's kind of a Diablo two nut. And I think he want. I think he's hoping the rest of us play it with him. But dude, I'm I, I have no interest. <laughs> I'm I'm no nah, fuck it. I why like why am I gonna why am I even gonna give it a shot? Because I there's other ARPGs I can play from companies that actually care that treat their employees well, you know, and treat their fans well. Like it's just fuck it, you know. Like it's not worth it, man. It's not. Yeah, I, I mean, I wholeheartedly agree. I just at this point. So, I don't want to come off like I don't care about the victims. But when I say I truly do not care about this whole thing breaking out, like it's not like I don't care because, like, oh, I'm just I'm just a fucking asshole and I don't care. It's just because the company who it is. Like I just don't fucking care. And the reason I just don't fucking care is because I honestly believe that they're the. This is not going to. I will be honestly surprised if they had like a huge ride company change. I don't think shit's going to change. And I, I mean either. that from the bottom of my heart. Like and you'd I'm have trying to get to be... Bobby Kotick out for it to change. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. he's the ringleader in my opinion. Like right. he's it the starts ringleader. with him. So 
if he's not resigning within the next month, then there's nothing there's nothing to talk about. We can do all the boycott that we want. We can do all this stuff. If there are not people resigning, if there are not people quitting, if there are not people getting fired, um, then what's the point of this? Like right. And I'm glad like that the developers themselves are walking out, mm-hmm. but it's like money's still raking in. Like people are still going to support this pro- these products and everything of that nature. And this sounds so defeatist, but I'm just so I'm over everybody, man. Like that's when I was sending those stories to you, mm-hmm. I went through the motions, and I'm just like, I think the last straw was. I'm pretty sure we're going to get to it later on, like maybe five or 10 minutes, but Jason Schreier's tweets um, about mm-hmm. Gamergate. And yeah. then I was like, oh, there it is right there. Now I'm done. That's that's where I cut my, I, I actually stopped caring. Like when I saw those tweets today, <sighs> I stopped yeah. caring, bro. And it's, and it's like, maybe I shouldn't. And it's like, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, well, you know, um, you wouldn't care if, if he wasn't talking about you. And it's like, he wasn't talking about me because I don't consider myself quote unquote Gamergate. I just, when you start bringing up stuff Uh-oh. to separate Watch people out. and you're taking, you're detracting you from the, yeah, you're detracting from the main cause and you're calling people labels and names. Like then I get uninterested in the whole thing because I'm like, this is not going to go anywhere because we're already dividing ourselves. So they already won. Like Bobby Kotick won already, bro. <laughs> just because yeah. from that. Well, um, yeah, Schreier. So he got, he's been getting accused of knowing about this for a while, which he has, you know, he, he, he does know. He's literally said he's been investigating this for years. Um, but some people have been asked, calling him into question, asking, you know, dude, if you knew about this, why didn't you whistleblow, you know? And he decided to resort to name calling where he started calling these people cretins and they're gamer gators. Like he called them cretinous gamer gators or something along those lines. And then he posted an email from like three months ago where he was following up on something with this, you know, I I don't like know what that was intended to disprove, but um, I mean, how do you feel about that dude? Like how, how, like his, cause the defense for him is that he was investigating this and he was trying to get enough evidence to release an article. And then this just happened to happen outside of his influence and blew the whole thing open and made it easy for him to get all the information he needed. And that is, that's you know, the thing. That's, that's, that's the a, defense, right? Yeah. And, and I totally get that. My problem is, and yes, you can call me a snowflake or whatever you want to call me. It doesn't detract from the, uh, what I'm about to say doesn't detract from the horrible things this company has done and the good that this man has done for the gaming industry and investigative journaling in gaming. Mm-hmm. But shut up with the name calling. Yeah. Why can't we just say, hey, here's my proof or hey, from everyone, for all the, ha- you can you can even say haters. Like I, I don't consider haters a, a, a derogatory term, right? But calling someone cretins and and gamer gators and <laughs> yeah, all this yeah. and all this crap, it, it's just, it's just so stupid. You can well, say, "Hey, like, for- dude, he's like painting with such a broad brush." Just because somebody asks you, "Hey, why didn't you publish this earlier if you knew about it?" Because this is really bad. Like you should have whistleblown on this. Yeah, the, and like I, and I, his default I, response is like, "Oh, you're a cretin." You know, it's like. No, I just this, I'm, all you had like to curious, say, you know. Yeah, all you had to say was, "Bro, I was gathering more evidence," and people would be like, "All right, cool." That yeah, that right that uh, to me that's a, a legitimate question. Your editor would ask you that fucking question. Hey, why didn't you report on this? I I heard you were reporting on this, or you were investigating this. How come you didn't break the story first? Oh, I just needed more evidence. My sources weren't giving up. This, this, and that, and the third. Like it's just, and I think that's that's what everyone does. But someone also pointed out he's too the first to report on rumors that are not confirmed. Yeah, like right. he was yes. one of the people yeah. that confirmed on the Switch Pro. Like he- okay, but in his defense, 
this is a lot more. This is a, this is different from just reporting on like right. a game yeah, coming right. out or a leak. Yeah, you're right. Like this you're is. Right. I mean, right. these are. This is. This is heavy. This is serious. Yeah. These, yeah. This these is, is heavy shit. Activation. Like he. I, so I understand from his perspective, he he was handling it with care, and but at the same time, his reaction here is overblown. He he he. His tendency and and like I respect him as a journalist. Like he is an excellent investigative journalist. Like he always has been. And he probably will continue to be so. But his crusade that he's on continues to degrade the quality of his work because it's really hard to take this guy seriously when he his response to somebody asking a benign question, even with a tinge of accus, accus, in an accusatory tone, is to call them cretins and gamer gators when that has... Like literally calling somebody a gamer gator is like equivalent to calling them a Nazi at this point, you know, like, bro, like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's just some random dude on Twitter. You know, it's like, and, where, and, where is this coming from? And the random dudes on Twitter that were asking the questions actually agree with everything that's going on. They just yeah. wanted to know why you didn't drop this because it looks it, I, I hate saying this word now. I said it so many fucking times. It looks performative. Like you're doing all of this and it looks performative. It, I mean, it is performative though. That's the thing. That's the thing, man. It is performative because this dude, like Jason Schreier is kind of a coward. Like, because the second he gets called into question in any way, even if it's slight, even if it's like the slightest thing I've heard, I've seen people ask him the most like benign question. And then they, they show up later and they're like, yeah, he blocked me. He just blocks people <laughs> like, bro, like you, you say anything, anything that he is even remotely off color about. He'll, he'll block your ass. And yeah, sure. That's his right. But he's just he's a coward. He doesn't want to be called into question because the second he is called into question, he results to name throwing and th- th- slur- sur- like hurling insults at people and kind of trying to defame them, basically. And it's like, bro, like, dude, it, he is. To me, you know how we had that article a while back about the uh, the the in club and in, in video game media, video games media, where they let they like kind of uh, block other people from from getting in certain positions and in and, and having success. You know, like he, Jason, is kind of like the ringleader of that group. You know, he always has been. He's like the beacon. You know, he's the guy that he's the one with the most clout. He's the one that actually. Like companies are legitimately scared of him because if he gets information that can make them look bad, he's going to fucking put it out there, you know? And so this dude's powerful within video games. And, but the way he decides to like wield his, his power is just such, it's so unfortunate because I think a lot of our problems like literally stem from this guy, you know, like he's the one fostering this argumentative culture, you know, like this, this name throwing like he does this all the time you know blocking people and just being toxic in general like he does this all the time and then you hear like this is what i don't understand it's like it's like it's like twitter turns him into a different person because dude i heard this guy on podcasts he like went on a podcast like uh, a few months ago and i i listened to an like an interview some some small podcast was interviewing him and they were they were legitimately like bringing up disagree they were disagreeing with him like they were they were bringing up they were challenging him like on the podcast and he was totally reasonable. Like he wasn't being an asshole at all. He was, he was like answering their questions in a very reasonable tone and being respectful for the most part. There were some things he said that were a little off color, but it was like, it wasn't that extreme though. It wasn't like what he does on Twitter where on Twitter, he's just like a fucking asshole, you know, like it's weird, man. It's like a different persona. And I, I, I mean, I guess that's what Twitter's all about. Honestly, it kind of is, but and maybe he's playing some clout game, you know, where he's just trying to drum up drama to make people fucking follow him. I don't know. But, man, it's just tiring, dude. It's like you said. It's just, it's just I don't even want to talk about that. Like, yeah, like by the time we got to the episode today, like I was excited about talking about this on Tuesday. And by the time we got to today, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I'm it was done too. with it. I don't even want to talk. Like, I'm, I'm, I mean, we are talking about it, but, dude, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like done with it. You know, it's like, fuck. I had so much shit to say on Monday and Tuesday. And then yeah. by the time today rolled around i was just like bro i don't give a fuck anymore like Mm -hmm. i feel so bad for those people i feel bad for the victims and everything of that nature yeah um but the conversation is going to steer away from them like it is it already has i mean we're doing it right now like yeah exactly (laughs) and 
and we're trying to stay on topic. So I can only imagine a discourse how it's going to be next week. It's not, either it's going to be non-existent or it's going to be Nazi gamer gators versus the Dude. left of 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 a uh, of a uh, <sighs> video games, and it's going to be women versus toxic males, toxic male gamers, and it's it's not going to get resolved. Like yes, those are battles that need to be had, but I feel like we just had it so much. Like. <laughs> We just mm-hmm. had it so much. Can we just focus on getting these assholes out of fucking um, out of their positions of power? Like, can yeah. we just do that, please? Right. The, the, like these guys should be fired straight up. Anybody who was involved in this, most of them aren't a blizzard anymore. But the thing is, like, they should be blacklisted, more. bro. Like, there, yeah, this, right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, because you're going to take that culture to another company. Like, I don't know. They it's all just, have jobs at other companies right now. Some exactly. of them have started their own studios, you know, and, and, and who uh, knows what they they've done already, right? You know, so right. I don't I don't know. It's just such a weird thing for um, I don't know. It's just so weird for people to just be like eh, to argue, oh, excuse me, among themselves about. To me, it was kind of selfish too. Like you're literally making the argument about yourself at that point. If yeah, you don't yeah, well, like you know, the question, if you don't like the 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 insults that people are throwing at you or the questions just don't answer them like right. you're a verified person on twitter twitter you has didn't an need algorithm. to address it at all exactly i feel like that was very performative of him he wanted to get people on his side again and he does this every time he did it with the union shit and yep. he did it with this shit and it's just it's so hard because i respect the man so much but there's like no one in his circle like hey man maybe you shouldn't do this and I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just weird. It's but just yeah, weird. they're all, they're all in on it, dude. The people he associates with, they're all in on it too. They love this shit, you know. They, they totally support what he's doing. You know, they're like, oh yeah, he's like a champion of justice, and it's like, not really, dude. Like, yeah, no, it's great that he's exposing shit in the industry like this, but at the same time, uh, going to war with random people on Twitter is not really it's unbecoming of somebody of his professional achievement, you know, in my opinion, like, and the fact that like, I mean, he works for Bloomberg, man. Like the fact that they just like, let him do whatever he wants like this is just, it's fucking wild to me. You know, the, the leeway that these people have with their companies to just pop off on Twitter about whatever the fuck they want, you know, is, is crazy to me, man. Because like, if, if let, like, let's say my company, for instance, uh, I started popping off about stuff, you know, getting really controversial, saying shit that's like, you know, like going at people, being toxic, attacking people and shit. And they found out and it became widely known that I work for the company I work for. I would be fired straight up. I would be fired. And I wouldn't I like me as I'm sitting here right now, wouldn't hold it against my company that they, they would do that because like he represents Bloomberg. He is a massive person at Bloomberg. You know, it's like, and, and the fact that they're willing to employ that is, it's questionable. It's questionable to me. You know, it kind of puts them, their integrity in question, you know, um, because they're, they're like implicitly supporting his actions, you know? So I don't know. I, I, yeah. I mean, to get back on topic with the blizzard stuff, just to wrap it up a little bit. Um, it, it's, it's heinous shit, man. It's wild. There, there's one thing we didn't talk about last week that I did want to bring up um, is that there was a f- Montreal mentioned it earlier that there was a female employee uh, who actually commit suicide on a uh, trip, like a company trip, because uh, Alex Afrasiabi was harassing her. And to the point that she had like a, a relationship with him too, like a sexual relationship, apparently. And it got to a point where she just like couldn't take it anymore because more than likely she was pressured into doing this uh, with, you know, incentives in her job. And and she was probably threatened at certain points if she didn't do things, you know, more than likely. And the fact that this just kind of happened and it was never talked about or discussed or like, because we never, I feel like most people probably had never heard about this before this was reported in this lawsuit and this is like that's awful dude like awful you think somebody committing suicide would make you as leadership really reevaluate what the hell's going on down there you know like figure out what the fuck like, what the fuck happened why would 
an employee of our company commit suicide, you know, and, and maybe it's something personal, but maybe it's not, maybe it has something to do with their job because most of us who have full-time jobs, we spend more time at our job than we do at home, you know? Uh, so there's a high chance that that's causing some problems and it's just wild, dude. It's crazy. And the fact yeah. that the fact that Activision Blizzard two decided to use that person's death in their statement to express disgust with the state of California is they're awful. It was one of the the Activision Blizzard statement is absolutely horrific, like abhorrent shit in my opinion. Can you, like, can you summarize what they said? Uh, let me get that. Let me get the actual statement. Okay. Yeah. While uh, you're doing that, yeah, I just think it kind of proves. Um, I mean, not to like get off topic, but everyone's wondering why people are just leaving jobs left and right. They don't really care about job loyalty. A person literally died on a retreat mm-hmm. under the company's time, and they just looked at it like a number number. Like, that's how I feel. And how are you supposed to work? You see these people every day. Some people see the people at work more than they see their family. Like, I used to spend eight hours a day with you, Justin. Yeah. Like how would how would that feel like one of us just committed suicide and then you know our boss is like, well, you know, these tickets are still going. Bro. Like oh that my. would <laughs> that would fucking kill us. You know? I would walk, I would, I would walk, I would have walked out. Like I would just walk out. I'd be done. I'd quit on this. I'd quit. I would have quit like straight up, bro. If that, that shit happened, like fuck, I don't want to work in a workplace like that. Like, nah, man. And and, and that's kind of how I feel Activision Blizzard probably told these employees. Like they probably just like Oh yeah, you know, if you want to sign a card, you can. But hey, man, we gotta meet this deadline for a while coming out soon. Shadowlands, hurry up! Oh my god, yeah, right, right. So here's part of the statement uh, from from Activision Blizzard. Uh, quote: We value diversity and strive to foster a workplace that offers inclusivity for everyone. There is no place in our company or industry or any industry for sexual misconduct or harassment of any kind. We take every allegation seriously and investigate all claims. In cases related to misconduct, action was taken to address the issue. Yeah, right, sure. The D, uh, the DFEH includes distorted and in many cases false descriptions of Blizzard's past. We have been extremely cooperative with the DFEH throughout their investigation, including providing them with extensive data and ample documentation, but they refuse to inform us of what issues they perceive, which... According to the lawsuit, that is not true. The DFEH like tried to work with Blizzard, and Blizzard wouldn't do anything. Like Activision Blizzard wouldn't do shit. They they did they weren't willing to meet the, whatever the demands were. So um, I cannot find the exact statement that related to this suicide. But let me keep looking. I mean, what did you think about that? Like, come on, oh my God, man. Just like more company shit, man. I some of these companies are just so. I don't even know why they give out statements at this point because it's like we can see through the bullshit. Like maybe 20 years that shit would have worked, but mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like I feel like company statements are so dumb now. Like yeah. there's there's almost no use for a PR team at this point. <laughs> like, but people yeah. still fall for it. So I guess I mean Yeah. Well, here it is. This is this this is the part of the statement I was talking about. Quote, we are sickened by the reprehensible conduct of the DFEH to drag into the complaint the tragic suicide of of an employee whose passing has no bearing whatsoever on this case and with no regard for her grieving family, end quote. That was in the statement. She literally committed suicide because of the company. Like, if, 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 if she committed suicide because of the sexual harassment that was happening... Like to say this in a statement, and it, and it gets proven in court. Like, dude, Activision Blizzard's taking a dirt nap, straight up, and they should, because this is disgusting to me. Like, this is the worst part of this. This is the worst part of their reaction to this. Is like, like all the statements that have happened, the internal emails that have leaked, and all this shit. This is the worst part to me. Is literally an employee of your company commits suicide because you have a culture that lets men harass women and one of it was so bad for one of them that they commit suicide and you're going to sit here and you try to turn that on your accusers to defend yourself and call it reprehensible that they're bringing it up 
Like, dude, they have every right to bring it up. <laughs> Absolutely. They're suing you because this happened. Like, you allowed this kind of shit to happen. Like, fuck that. It's fucking crazy, man. It's crazy. No, you're right. I, I'm i a man, first of all. <laughs> and I think I, I consider myself pretty thick-skinned. Um, just to, like for people who just don't understand how this shit can pressure you. Um, mm-hmm. and I dated someone off Twitter and it was pretty physical as far as it was pretty sexual and stuff like that. And then things broke off and then it got really nasty on Twitter between both of us where I had half of Twitter down my neck. People were blocking mm-hmm. me left and right and continue actually there's a lot of fallout from that because a lot of people continue to still block me. A lot of people think I'm subtweeting them when I'm not and everything Mm -hmm. of that nature. It was very hard for me. Like I wasn't in like a suicidal state, but I was like some of these people, people I did consider my friends because you know, you can have online friends who, who you really care about. Mm -hmm. And for, for a lot of those people to turn on me and do all this stuff and everything of that nature and for me to go at them the way I did it took a real beating on me, right? So I can only imagine being in a company where you see these people every day. You have a sexual relationship with one of them. And according to the leaks, um, you know, pictures and news are getting sent around and everything of that nature. I can only imagine the amount of stress. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm very personal about my body. So if I send something to someone and then they just show it to everybody. Yeah. I'm like I say, I'm a dude, and I'm liable to be like, yeah, this is it for me. I'm about to check out. I'd be the like, same way. Yeah, it's it's. I can only imagine the amount of pressure that woman was feeling at the time, mm-hmm. and then she probably had other stuff going on in her personal life as well that just added more fuel to the fire. So, yeah. I take suicide very seriously, and I I, I hate that uh, it had to come to that. Um, but people. And I, and I hate that people, I know suicide is obviously you do it to yourself, but I feel like people are responsible. There are people in your lives that are responsible for oh, that shit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, like, <laughs> there's a reason that a person gets to the point that they contemplate that and then actually do it. You know, they're not like, they have to be in such a horrific mental state. Like, it's almost unfathomable. Like, how, how, how depressed. And how much you hate yourself that you'd have to get to that point, you know? And I, yes, the people around those people are responsible in some ways, you know? And now it's not to the point that I think like they deserve to go to jail necessarily. Yeah. yeah, But to think, but to think though that you're going to sit there and say like, oh, it's disgusting that you would even bring that up. You know, it has nothing to do with our, this case, you know, it's like, I mean, you don't know that. Did she tell you that before she did it? Like, (laughs) I doubt that, (laughs) you know, how do you know that? Have you talked to her family? Like, I doubt that. I really do. So, um, I'm sure it will be dragged through the mud if, if Activision Blizzard does not settle before this goes to court. Like, we're going to hear more. We will if 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 this actually goes to to trial, and and there is discovery that happens and evidence evidence is brought forth, like it's going to get real ugly. And I would imagine Activision does not want this to go to trial. Like I, I would expect a a settlement. It's going to be hefty, but I expect a settlement. Um, and by hefty, I'm thinking hundreds of millions, probably, <laughs> like legitimately. So, um. Yeah, I don't know. It's a heavy topic, man. This is uh this sucks all around. But, you know, I I hope it actually leads to change in the industry because this is one of the times where I think the industry uh the actual obnoxiousness of the industry is probably a good thing because this just it, it this can't be the way the industry is, man. Like because, you know, if dude, if I have a a kid, like a daughter someday, and she decides that she wants to be a game designer. I do not want her walking into this shit. You know, like I don't, I just, I don't. So, uh, man, I think that's the scariest part about it. A lot of people aren't taking it seriously. Um, mm-hmm. 
But like, what if you, what if your daughter, cousin, sister, mm-hmm. you know, or, or even mother, friend. yeah, or friend, just walked into this situation, like they're working in this situation. Wouldn't you want to do something about that? Like, wouldn't you want that culture to change? And I think a lot of men don't think in that perspective. We just think, unfortunately, with our heads down there, or um, we don't think about other perspectives at all. And I think the company, one, I'm pretty sure this company has daughters. People in these companies have daughters, wives. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's it's just amazing to me how this is still going on in 2021. Like, this I know, this sounds probably. like something that happened in the early 2000s, like before Gamergate. Or even the 90s, you know? Like 90s, the, yeah. Yeah, right. Ugh. Yeah, it's wild. I don't. Uh, man, I don't know. I don't. I don't have much else to say, really. Um, anything you, else you want to go? You want to? You want to uh, say before we move on? No, I just hope uh, those people. I hope you know the the workers of Blizzard, uh, the developers of Blizzard. I hope they get their justice. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, man, that's it. Yeah, I hope they. Well said. I hope they get change. The change that's needed. Um, I hope people that have done things that are still at the company get tossed tossed out fired let go um and uh i hope this results in change in the industry and and honestly one one thing i do want to say is like can we just be better to each other guys like please you know the things that like jason schreier is doing and others are doing don't don't emulate their example you know like these are bad people legitimately like they're, they're not good people uh, so we should not be following their example um, when we are online. But I uh, digress. All right, let's move on. Uh, what we're gonna uh, move on from that somehow and talk about uh, SSDs. <laughs> <laughs> so Sony has released a beta for a new firmware for the PlayStation Five that will actually enable the SSD slot within the console. And while this is exciting. Uh, some pricing has come out for SSDs that are going to be compatible and uh, Seagate's one of the companies and they are going to be offering four different SSDs, a 500 gigabyte, a one terabyte, a two terabyte and a four terabyte. And the 500 gigabyte is $170, uh, which is pretty crazy for that, that size. Uh, and then 275 for the one terabyte. That seems like the most bang for your buck. I guess technically, and then uh, five seventy for the two terabyte, and then a thousand and fifty dollars for the four terabyte. Montreal, are you gonna are you running out to the store tomorrow to buy one of these? Hell no, nah. that's too much money for a goddamn hard drive. Mm-hmm. And I yeah, know that's... it's because the the read and write speeds, but yeah. I feel like I also feel like this is just nothing but price gouging because of what the product is supporting. Yeah, I mean, dude, like the one terabyte costs over half of what the console does. You know, the the two terabyte does cost more than the console. Like, what the fuck, man? You know, it's like, what what the hell, dude? So I don't know. I, I mean, I'm glad this is happening, but I almost want to look it up. Like, what does this compare to uh, Microsoft's? Um, you know, expansion hard drive. Let me see. Xbox Series X. Uh, expansion SSDs. Yeah, sure. What are their prices? I think there's is proprietary, I want to say. One terabyte for them. Uh, 220. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Both these companies are ridiculous yeah yeah i know but yeah but it's 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 better it's like a little better right <laughs> no I, I it's the same thing to me 20 dollar difference i think fuck them yeah the same okay yeah I, this is this is totally unacceptable this is almost this is legit PS Vita vibes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. The memory cards. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is crazy. Like it's like both companies didn't learn from that from that device. Yeah. No, definitely. It's uh yeah, it's not great. I mean, I don't know how many people are gonna buy these. I doubt very many will. Because I'll be honest with you, uh storage on the PS5 is not as big of a problem. I feel as it was on the PS4. Uh, game sizes are actually getting a little smaller. Uh, I've been noticing, and uh, that trend is probably going to continue as companies learn how to use the SSD um, when designing their games. So it's might not be that big of a deal, you know the uh, the the actual hard drive size or or solid state drive size rather. So, but if you want them, it's coming. You'll be able to use them finally, you know. If you want to spend hundreds of dollars on some space, <laughs> basically, like this is like, dude, you know, this is like kind of drives me crazy because think about think about why people are doing this, right? They're 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 literally buying one of these. They're gonna spend hundreds of dollars on one of these, literally, so that they don't have to go into the settings menu and delete games. Like that's why. It's just because you're lazy, like. Or you have Call of Duty on your console. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Pretty much. 250 yeah. gig game on your console. That's what it is. Yeah. Just delete Call of Duty. There's better games. Go play some. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, while we were looking at that story, Montreal, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you literally are gonna, you're gonna, sh- you're gonna like disconnect from the podcast when I say this. But I saw a story on this website, Video Game Chronicle. Uh, Aloy from Horizon is coming to Genshin Impact. <laughs> I actually saw that. Yeah, That's I saw that. A week what the ago. Fuck? Yeah, I saw that like last week, and I thought it was like a fan art thing, but no, like she's legitimately coming to Genshin Impact. And yeah. I, I actually don't care, but it's actually intriguing because yeah. I think they may turn Genshin Impact into the next Fortnite as far as like random characters just dropping on there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really know the story. I forgot the story. So I don't know how that correlates, how they're going to fit her in the narrative. But hey, man, good for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually think this is kind of cool. I, yeah. I miss Genshin Impact. Man, I miss Genshin Impact. Don't you dare. Don't I know I can't. I know I can't. I can't. <laughs> there's also, there's not enough content for me to go back yet. But um. I'm telling you, man, in a year or two, I'm going to be all about this game, Montreal. I might download this to get her because actually uh, you can get her for free. She's going to be she's going to be like a free character. So as long as you just as long as you log in the game, you'll get her for free according to this article. So uh, if your adventure ranks like rank 20 or higher, you'll get her for free. But so I kind of want to like download the game, just log in real quick and then like delete the game, you know, just to just to have her. But you, you know, know you're not gonna do that. So. I know I can't do it, man. Because the second I log into the game, I'm gonna be like, "Ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's this? Oh, what's this?" And then it's like, "Oh God, you're down the rabbit hole," you know? Yep. So yeah, I don't need this game back in my life. But damn, man, it's coming in September, so that gives me a couple months, right? Yeah, and this game's only on PS4 and PC, right? Uh, and mobile. And mobile, I okay, guess true. So, I think I it's mean, native it's, on PS5 too. No. Yeah, it is. So, um that being said, I guess this is a solidified not all the way a PS PlayStation exclusive, but I mm-hmm. think this is this is like PlayStation's way of like saying like, "Hey, we kind of want you to be exclusive to us." Yeah. Um I'll be highly surprised if this ends up on like Xbox Series X or anything like that. Highly yeah, surprised. I would too. I think Switch was rumored for a long time, but that seems to have died. I don't, I don't like. It. I don't think it came to Switch, and I don't know if it's going to. So yeah, I think I, I will. I will be the first to say if it comes to Switch, I am. I will be highly surprised because I think the reason why it probably didn't go to Switch is because Nintendo was highly like offended mm-hmm. about the style copy. It's literally Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so not literally, but like the style is like of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't allow something like that on their consoles, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they're just leaving money on the table, though, being butt hurt. But whatever. But I mean, bro, we talked about how much money they leave with other products. I know, like, I know. Even they their leave own money products. on the table all the time to be petty. So, yeah, you know, whatever, Nintendo. So, all right. 
Montreal. Let's move on to our final story. Uh, we're we're going to touch on this briefly. We actually talked about this on the Catch Up Podcast. If you would like to hear our full thoughts there, um, that's probably the better p- place to do it. But we do need to mention this on the show because we have been following this for uh, years now at this point. Is that Tencent is acquiring Sumo Digital for $1.27 billion, And Sumo Digital is a publisher... Uh, they're a small publisher. They do not. Uh, they do not publish uh, big, well-known games necessarily. But they've made. Uh, the, they've created the Sonic and Sega All Star Racing series. Uh, their most recent game was Hood Outlaws and Legends, which I don't know if that's even remotely popular. They've made some little Big Planet uh, spinoff games. Uh, they've also. Uh, done some work on Hitman, Forza Horizon, Crackdown, things like that. So this is a, a company that's actually been on the rise uh, lately, and uh, they got gobbled up by Tencent. And I do want to read their statement, actually, on this show, which we didn't do on the catch-up, uh, because it is highly strange. Uh, so I quote, Tencent has a strong track record for backing management teams and their existing strategies. Alongside the acceleration of own IP work, Tencent has demonstrated its commitment to backing our client work and has stated its intention to ensure that we have the necessary investment to continue focusing on work with our key strategic partners on turnkey and co-development projects. The future for Sumo looks more exciting than ever. And uh, the beginning of it uh, says, the opportunity to work with Tencent is one we just couldn't miss. I end, end quote. They couldn't miss it, Montreal. They could not miss the opportunity to work with a Chinese conglomerate. How does that? How does that sit with you? <laughs> I, uh, I was so I mean, excited, bro. I mean, listen. Okay, so I get it. Like that's like I'm trying to think of it from their perspective, right? And I'm trying to think of it from a business perspective. Like we have a, I, we have a, a brand that we're trying to create, and I'm trying to think of it like, what if like Kotaku approached us, right, and we're like, mm-hmm. hey, mm-hmm. we'll give you one million dollars for this, yeah, and that's like a million, that's five hundred grand each between me and you, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, will we take it? That's a lot of money to change our lives, or yeah. will we just be like, nah, we're good. And it depends if it on the was situation. 10 million, I'd think a little harder on it. I think in that situation, I'd probably say no. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Yeah, I, I'll do like an offer we can't refuse, like ten or twenty million, right? And I'm pretty sure Kotaku doesn't have that much, but that's, <laughs> they definitely don't. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say five million. I think that's a good two point five each, right? So okay. five million approaches us, and they're like, yeah, like, but you gotta change some of your topics. You can't really like bash us anymore and everything of that nature. I guess it would depend on the, the the needs of the contract, but it's like I, th- I guess from their perspective, they're game developers, right? So they're never probably they're thinking we're never going to have anything that kind of um uh you know conflate or conflicts with Chinese interest. And I don't think I think people aren't thinking. They're thinking too short-sighted. Like they can do some real. This can do some real damage, and it's just like no one's talking. I mean, we already we always say this that no one's talking about it. But each time ten cents acquires something, it's a very strategic reason. I mean, yeah. these company that company that, that you just mentioned. I'm thinking about it, and I'm not even like a business major or anything. Yeah. They touched every console, every console. Yeah, they did. So now with the backing of Tencent, they can even they can do even more touching and more like influence and things of that nature. It's like it's like a small ten, tentacle within that 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 thing. And I I don't know what they're even planning. Like that's how scared I am because I just I just don't know what they're planning. Like because it's a very good tentacle to have within the gaming sphere because that mm-hmm. they touch everybody like they touch you know xbox ips they touch sony's ips they touch i think they touched uh even nintendo's ips yeah so well (sighs) there's actually a story related to this um that we did talk about either related to tencent they're actually uh potentially acquiring crytek um oh my god and 
they're going to do it through a subsidiary, but they would still own it ultimately. <clears throat> and this was reported in a German uh, news outlet is that they're thinking of um, they want to acquire Crytek and Crytek actually makes military simulation software for Western armies. Oh. And that, oh that, my God, that should be ringing people's alarm bells. Like ding, 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 ding. Like what the fuck? You know, I didn't know Crytek does that. That's cool, actually. I didn't either, but makes sense because they've been really quiet for a long time in yeah. the gaming space. They have had to have survived somehow, you know. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I see. I see. I see their moves now. That's that's actually wild. That's wild. And the reporter. Uh, you know, uh, went on to mention that their uh, employees are internal to Crytek. They're actually afraid that the company's going to get purchased and then they're going to, like, China's going to end up using their software, you know, and they're going to have no say in it, obviously, because they're owned, <laughs> you know. Oh, man. And no one's talking about this because it's video game related. Mm hmm. And dude, you know what, man? Um, <laughs> there's actually a tweet from somebody pretty well known in the game space, uh, Daniel Ahmad, uh, Zuj EX. He's uh, yeah. He, he reports on rumors a lot, and he's he's literally ridiculing this article in like a tweet, dude. Like saying like, you know, oh pff, god, dude, yeah, they're like sensationalizing. Like China's gonna use this to spy on the West. It's like, I mean. Even if they don't, they're going to use, they could use this technology to enhance their own military operations. You know, it's like. What I, is wrong with us? I mean, I understand America. Wait, America wait, what is. What am I saying, dude? This is what we were talking about yesterday. Like, what the fuck? Like, why are you ridiculing this guy for bringing this up? Like, this is a, this is like a, like a real concern, bro. Like, what the sensational like he has sources within the company that are fucking like saying this like they're actually concerned about this and this guy's like <laughs> what a joke like they're gonna spy on all us. right so you know, i'm sound, software like wall this, this may sound like super wokeish or whatever um this is a privilege of living in a first world country that's really well defended yeah that right there is a privilege uh what he just did, what he just said. Because he, we don't have to see, we don't have to worry about, this is the, the privilege of being isolated. Yeah. We, we feel so comfortable that we don't have to worry about moves like this. Or people feel like they don't have to worry about moves like this. I feel like if this was another country, say like this was like the UK, right? And the UK was they were making moves to acquire UK stuff. The UK would be on high alert because China is right there next to them. They're like, whoa, hold on now. This is crazy. Even journalists would be like, this is crazy. Like, someone needs to be checking into this. But because we're so isolated, journalists don't care. They're not thinking about the bigger picture. And that's the, this, this is the privilege of a well-guarded, well-defended nation. And Mm -hmm. or for so many years rather and with so many years we've been boasting that we are the top number one nation as far as military and all this other technology and and well, I me mean, i think we are but it's like they are doing stuff they are attacking our underbelly our underbelly mm -hmm. like yeah we have a hard shell but we're like they are just like digging from underground and using i mean dig, they're making us fight with, from within dude we're gonna destroy our shell from the inside that's yeah. what they're doing, man. We were talking about that yesterday. It's like, like they they literally make bot accounts on Twitter and other social media sites, and then they'll just drop some tweet about some topic that pisses everyone off, and then they leave, and everyone starts fighting with each other. They do that all the time. <laughs> yes. That happens all the time, dude. Like Montreal's like seen it where he's like, there's been some huge argument that happens and you see the original tweet. And it's made by somebody that's tweeted once. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> literally, that was their tweet. That was their first tweet. You know, just some fucking uh, no profile picture. 
you know, and like no, they have a profile picture, right? They have a profile picture. Or, oh yeah, and, oh yeah, like a fake person, right? Yeah, yeah, like and so what they've been doing now, right? Um, like they've been actually tweeting a lot. Like they have the bot tweet so many times, like maybe a thousand or thousand five hundred times or something like that, and then they'll start like gain some followers, and the bots are so so good that people actually think they're communicating with these. They're people. Like people think these are people. And then they'll start tweeting like random stuff. But yeah, that's I'm digressing. Anyway, this is crazy. Um, I know this is not a political podcast, but since the beginning of this podcast, we've been following them. I think the third episode we started we started talking about Tencent because they did yeah. something with like Blizzard or some shit. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah. Ever since then, that was two. That was three years ago, guy. Almost three years ago, because it'll be three years in December. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, that's that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> it'll be three years in December, and the amount of influence they've gained in three years is significantly scary for me. Yeah. Three years, and you bought almost half the industry. And I know. No one's talking about I'd this. Love, I'd love to know how many times we've talked about Tencent acquiring a company in in the time this podcast has been going on, and, and it's been a lot. And dude, like this is a company that has ties to the CCP, the Chinese Confident Communist Party, and we're just like laughing about the idea that they might that they have some in- like, bro, they're not acquiring these companies for no fucking reason. Yeah, maybe it's just to make money. Maybe it is. But even even if that's the case, that money's getting funneled into the Chinese government, which means they're using video games to fund other things that China wants to do. Like, so even if it's just that, even if it's just that, that's not good either. That's bad. Like, we are funding them. We're literally giving them money straight up and like funding them. Like, that's fucking crazy. And we... And, and people are just laughing about this. Like, oh, what a joke. Oh, we got nothing to worry about. Like, lol, they're going to spy on us. Fuck it, bro. It doesn't even need to be that severe. Severe. They could literally just own these things and make a shit ton of money. Tencent makes like $220 billion a year. Like, are you kidding me? And we're just like, whatever. Like, oh, oh, no big deal. You know? Oh, they they acquired Riot. Oh, no big deal. It's fine. You know, fucking 40% of Epic to the biggest game companies on the planet. Oh, it's okay. It's no big deal. They 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 have 5% of Activision and somehow have their tendrils so deep in that company that they made them fucking obliterate Blitzchung when he all he said was free Hong Kong. They fucking obliterated that dude. And then they forced, somehow, Activision decided, oh, of their own free volition, that they were going to remove footage of Tiananmen Square from a from a, a Call of Duty trailer. Huh? They only own 5% of the company. Like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like, kowtowing to China like that? Like, what? Guys, like, I, I don't understand, like, where where we are with this. Like, this is a, this is a horrible government. Ch- the Chinese government is horrible. They literally have concentration camps full of Uyghurs that they, like, forcibly re-educate into believing Chinese propaganda. Like, are you kidding me? We're just like, and we're like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, they might spy on us with military technology. Oh, what a joke. Like, dude, Montreal's 100% right. He hit the fucking nail on the head. We are so isolated. We're so just completely isolated from reality with this stuff. Like, it's wild that the video game industry, they report on these acquisitions. Every time they do, they report on these acquisitions. But it's always like... Just like, oh, whatever. Oh, it's just another ten cent acquisition. Oh, ha ha. Oh, ten cent. They're buying the whole industry. You know, it's like, guys. At a certain point, it's gonna be too late. They're gonna own so much of the industry. There's nothing we can do. You know, and then yeah. then what happens? They can do whatever they want. They can change all the games we play to to be whatever they want. And maybe they won't. But they probably won't. But they could. And again, point case in point is even if they do nothing and let these companies operate they're still making money off of it you know so i don't know i don't yeah it's it's pretty weird like even daniel ahmed's tweets one of them said these companies are fundamentally fundamentally understand that 
developers are successful because of their current leadership. And especially in the case of Tencent, they're, they have a hands-off approach and let the companies continue to, to do as they please without brand, without brand and reorganize, reorganization. And then another uh, tweet uh, says, in general, the, there's little evidence in, from past investments and acquisitions that there will be any type of sweeping changes among the, in, in the articles. This is why, this is why, or this is the one reason why developers sign on in the first place. Also, this quote is hilarious to me. Uh, the quote says, Thomas, or Thomas David, a semiconductor engineer in the U.S., told CB, C, CNBC that he thinks gamers should start to think more about titles as where the good guys is China and where the, the West is the bad guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then someone's talking about, you know, the level of red fear. Red fear is really big in the gaming community and everything of that nature. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think it's red fear. And I don't want to sound like I'm like anti China or whatever. Like I don't I don't No, like we don't have a problem with the Chinese people. Yeah. <laughs> I have no issue with them or their culture. It's the government. Yeah, like I don't I don't care about yeah, China. I mean I don't when I say I don't care, I, I say, when I say that I say that in a very nice way. When I say I don't care, I don't care about what they do, their culture and everything of that nature because they are their own people and everything of that nature. When it comes to US I live in America and I don't want their style of government <laughs> at all. None of us do. And uh, I I just, I don't, I feel like we're on the cusp of like a cyber invasion. We're already there and it's going to be turned to a physical one. Maybe not in our lifetime, but maybe in our kids' lifetime or maybe it will happen in our lifetime. Who fucking knows? It's just really scary. Um and from like a gaming standpoint, yeah, I mean, so far they've been hands off of everything, right? They're just acquiring the money and everything of that nature. Uh, but like, doesn't no one see the the issue with that? Like, they're almost to the point where they're going to own half the gaming industry. I, I'm, I'm, I will confidently say you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, Justin. Or whatever, but I can, on my opinion, I think they own about twenty five percent of the gaming industry, and that's fucking huge. I mean, they don't own that much; they own a lot. But what I will say though is that when we get to the point that they own, like, if if they ever get to the point where they own Activision, EA, or even just one of them, you know, to to like a majority degree where they have more than fifty percent of the shares, um, that's scary as fuck. In my opinion. But the thing is, 5% apparently is enough for them to influence Activision Blizzard. You know, it's like, and maybe, maybe they had nothing to do with it. Maybe Tencent had nothing to do with it. And then Activision is just like so afraid to lose money in China and get their game banned in China that they're like, oh, no, we can't do this. We can't do this. Oh, we, we got to make maximum money. You know, it's like, well, when, when all we do is make that decision to make maximum money, it means we're easily easy to manipulate because if we show if somebody shows enough dollars, you'll do anything. You'll you if they say jump, you'll jump. <laughs> you know. So when China comes knocking and says, "Well, take the footage of Tiananmen Square out," you'll do it. And that's it's not strictly propaganda, but it's propaganda adjacent because you're like you're trying to squelch events that actually happened in history. You know, and you're doing it outside of China. Like they're, they're doing that outside of China. There are plenty of people who don't know what that is. And that might've been a way for them to have learned about it. I mean, probably not. It was a short clip, but it doesn't matter if, if, if a game uh, goes more in depth about it and then it gets taken out, you know, they're, they're literally doing that. They're, they're, they're taking that information away from people that they might've otherwise learned, you know? So it's i mean the influence is there guys like like don't pretend it isn't like it happened with uh, guilty gear strive recently too like that game had and that is a company the company that makes that game is owned by tencent so um they had to take lore entries out that mentioned taiwan as a country and and all sorts of shit like that and then and then there was john cena recently apologizing for calling taiwan a country and he did it in mandarin chinese like are you fucking kidding me? Like, what are we doing? You know, it's like, we're just all okay with this. I don't, I don't, 
I don't, so I, I don't know. I find it bizarre, dude. Like we live in a weird world, man, where we're like defending China, you know, as Americans, it's like, huh? Huh? Like, I, I, okay. I guess. Sure. But I don't know. You have anything else you want to add? On this? Uh, nope. That's it. All oh, right. Man. Yeah. Let's <laughs> call it an episode. We went, we actually went a lot longer than I thought we would. Yeah. Um, so we hope you guys enjoyed this longer than expected episode this week. And if you did, please like the episode, review the show and subscribe to the show on whatever feed you are listening to it on. And please, please, please share it with your friends. Uh, if you'd like to interact with us on Twitter, you can do so at I trap for the Hokage. Uh, that is the number four, not the word that's for Montreal. I'm at thunder at zero one and the show is at the players take. Uh, and if you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter or you can send us an email to the players take zero one at gmail.com. And that is it for us, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you next week. Bye.